Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to find powers of monomials. So what that means is, if you look at this first example I have here, if I have something like x squared and I want to raise that to the third power, what that really means is to do x squared times itself three times. Well, if I write that in expanded notation, x squared looks like x times x. And so if I do that three times, I have what looks like x times x times x times x times x times x, which would equal x to the sixth. And I know that because when I multiply, I add my exponents together. So the rule, if we see something that I call almost like a double exponent or a double power here, is to get our answer, we're going to multiply the exponents. Okay, so that's kind of our, our shortcut or our trick so that we don't have to write it in expanded notation each time. Now, what happens if there's a coefficient? Well, we treat a coefficient like we would um, any time we were, we were doing a number to a power. So in this example, I have a 2 as my coefficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take that 2 and raise it to the third power. So 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So I raise the coefficient to the power, and then my rule for my exponents again is just to multiply. So my answer here would be 8 x to the 6. Okay, so let's try some examples to make sure we understand that rule. So number one, um, and even though our coefficient isn't written here, it's really a 1. And so if you needed to think, okay, well, 1 to the 5th power is still 1, that's why we're not worrying about writing it. Okay, so I'm just going to use my rule that when I'm raising an exponent to a power, I multiply. So this would equal x to the 10th power. Um, number two over here, again, my coefficient is one, so one to the third power is just one. So I'm going to do x to the third power to the third power. So that would give me, if I multiply, x to the ninth and y to the ninth. Okay, number three, um, again, my coefficient is one. One to the third power is just one. Then I have a c to the first to the third power. So that gives me c to the third when I multiply my exponents. And then I have d squared to the third power, which would give me d to the sixth. Okay, over in number four. So here's one where my coefficient is something other than one. So I take my coefficient, negative four, and I raise it to the power. So negative four to the third power is negative four times negative four times negative four. So negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16, and 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. And then I deal with my variables and exponents. So remember, I'm multiplying my exponents here. So x to the third to the third is x to the ninth, and y to the fourth to the third is y to the twelfth. Okay, number 5. Um, again, our coefficient is something other than 1, so negative 3 gets raised to the third power. So negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, times negative 3 is negative 27, and x squared to the third power is x to the sixth. Okay, in number 6, we have two steps here. Um, because I see that there's multiplication and there's an exponent. So we have to make sure we're following our order of operations, even with monomials. And so if you think of your order of operations, we do parentheses, exponents, then multiplication and division. So my first step is going to be to take care of that exponent that I see. So I'm going to take that monomial and raise it to the fourth power. So I'm just going to bring down this a to the third times. And when I evaluate this, a squared to the fourth power is a to the eighth, and b to the first to the fourth power is b to the fourth. 
Now I can go ahead and I can multiply these two monomials together. So really what I'm going to do here is a to the third times a to the eighth, which remember when we're multiplying, we add our exponents. So this would give me a to the eleventh. And there is no b to multiply by that b to the fourth, so I'm just going to leave it a to the eleventh times b to the fourth. Okay, for number seven, let's go ahead and um, raise this monomial to the third power. So here my coefficient is a half, so a half to the third power looks like this. Um, remember when we multiply fractions, we just multiply straight across. So one half to the third power is one eighth. And then we're going to raise all of these variables to the third power. So this becomes a to the ninth, b to the twelfth, and c to the fifteenth. Now just so you know, you could leave your answer as that. Or some people prefer, you might see as we go on into further lessons, some people will write it like that, okay, because really um, the a to the ninth, b to the twelfth, c to the fifteenth, those are all over one, like this. So if I were to multiply them all together, those three things would end up on the top and the eight would end up on the bottom. So that's just another way that you can write it. All right, number eight, we have a lot going on here. So um, I can see that I have a monomial squared times, there's no multiplication there, but we assume that it's multiplication, times another monomial squared. So according to the order of operations, I need to square those two monomials first before I multiply them together. Okay, so the first monomial, negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then I have an a to the first squared, which is a squared, and a b to the second squared, which is b to the fourth. I'm going to put that in parentheses because I'm going to multiply it by the second monomial squared. So 3 to the second power is 9, a squared squared is a to the fourth, and b to the first squared is b squared. Okay, so now that I've taken care of all of my exponents, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two monomials together. So remember your rules for multiplying are multiply your coefficients, 4 times 9 is 36, and we add our exponents. So a squared times a to the fourth is a to the sixth. And b to the fourth times b to the second is b to the sixth. So that's our final answer. Okay, for number nine, we're just squaring this monomial. So negative two squared, negative two times negative two is positive four. a to the fourth squared is a to the eighth and b to the 6th squared is b to the 12th. In number 10, let's see, we have a couple of operations going on here. So the first monomial I have, 2a squared, is being raised to the third power, so there's an exponent. Then I have addition, and then these last two monomials are being multiplied together. So out of those three operations, the order that we're going to do is exponents, then multiplication, and then addition. Okay, so let's take care of the exponent first. So 2a squared to the third power. We take our coefficient of 2 and we raise it to the third power. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And 8, I'm sorry, a squared to the third power is a to the sixth. Step 2 is I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to take that a to the fourth and multiply it by 3a squared. So when we multiply, we multiply our coefficients. Really, 1 times 3 is 3. And we add our exponents. So a to the 4th times a squared is a to the 6th. And then our last step is going to be to add our monomials, which if you look carefully, they are like terms, so we can add them. And so the rule is we add our coefficients. 8 plus 3 is 11. And we keep our exponents the same. So a to the 6. Okay, let's try a couple more. Getting a little bit longer here. So number 11, I can see that I have two monomials to a power, and then they're being multiplied together. So let's go ahead and do that first monomial to the second power. So I take my coefficient, 1 half, and I square it. 
1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. And then I'm going to take my variables and I'm going to square those. So b to the fifth squared, remember we're multiplying our exponents, is b to the tenth. c to the sixth squared is c to the twelfth. Okay, and we're going to multiply that by the next monomial to the third power. So again, my coefficient is one half, but now I'm raising it to the third power. So one half times one half times one half is one eighth. B to the fourth to the third power is B to the twelfth. And C to the third to the third power is C to the ninth. Okay, now we're ready to multiply these two monomials together. So we're going to start by multiplying our coefficients. One fourth times one eighth is one over thirty two. And remember when we multiply, we add our exponents. So B to the tenth times B to the twelfth is b to the 22nd. And c to the 12th times c to the 9th is c to the 21st. And that's my final answer. This is another one where maybe you like this better. It's just another way to write it. Okay, so let's look at 12. There is a lot going on here. Um, so let's take a look at what operations we have first. So I can see I have um, the first three monomials are being multiplied together, but we're only going to do that after we raise them to their powers. Then I'm going to add the other two monomials that have been raised to the power and multiplied. So why don't we go through to start and just raise everything to the given power, since that's our first, or that's our first operation. So a squared to the third power gives me a to the sixth. And then I need to multiply that by 2a squared to the second power, which would give me 4a to the fourth. And then I need to multiply that by a to the fifth squared, which is a to the tenth. Plus, now I'm going to take negative a to the fourth and square that. So the coefficient there is negative 1, and when I square a negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So I don't need to write it, but know that it turns into a positive 1, and that would be a to the 8th. And then that last monomial, negative 2, a to the 3rd to the 4th power. So negative 2 to the 4th power, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. And then we would get a to the 12th. Okay, so we've taken care of all of the exponents. Now our next operation is multiplication. So let's multiply our first three monomials together. So the coefficients here are 1, 4, and 1. So 1 times 4 times 1 is 4. And then a to the 6th times a to the 4th times a to the 10th. Remember, when we multiply, we add our exponents. So that gives me a to the 20th. Plus, let's go ahead and multiply these two monomials together. So my coefficients, 1 times 16, 16. And a to the 8th times a to the 12th, again, we add our exponents, is a to the 20th. Okay, so our last step is to add. Um, these, again, are like terms, so I can add them. So I add my coefficients. 4 plus 16 is 20. And we keep our exponents when we add. So 20a to the 20th. All right, so let's do some applications with these um, double exponents, I call them. So number 13 says, express the area of a square in simplest form if the length of each side is 8x to the 4th y to the 3rd units. Alright, so I'm just going to draw a quick picture here. So we know a square has all equal sides. And if we're finding the area, the area of a square is side squared. So I'm going to take the side, which I know is the same for every side of that square, going to square it. So I take my coefficient 8 and I square it to get 64 
and when I square my variables and exponents here, I'm going to be multiplying. So x to the fourth squared is x to the eighth, and y to the third squared is y to the sixth. And they don't give us a label besides units, so I'm going to say units squared. Okay, number 14. Express the volume of a cube in simplest form if the length of each side is 2.3x to the 7th y squared units. Okay, so a cube is a three-dimensional figure where all of the side lengths are the same. And so we're going to say 2.3x to the 7th y squared. Now when I say that, Remember, that means every side is the same as that, okay? So um, you might know this, you might not. Volume of a cube, the formula, is side to the third power. Um, you could also use length times width times height for this. Um, no matter what, you're going to be multiplying that monomial times itself three times. So again, since I know this is the side length, I'm going to take that and raise it to the third power. Okay, so... By the way, if you're not sure how to type this in your calculator, um, there's a key, I call it the caret key, it kind of looks like this. You would be typing in 2.3, then you would hit the caret key and press 3, and then equals, and that will tell you what that decimal is to the third power. Of course, you could always just type in 2.3 times 2.3 times 2.3, but good to know that that key is there. Okay, so 2.3 to the third power, I'm getting 12.167, and x to the seventh to the third power is x to the 21st, and y squared to the third power is y to the sixth. And again, they just tell us units, so I'm going to call this units cubed, because it's volume cubed. All right, number 15, express the area of a circle in terms of pi if the radius is represented by 3a to the fourth b squared units. All right, so circle, that's my best circle, <laughs> and the radius is 3a to the fourth b to the second. Okay, so area of a circle is pi r squared. Now, when it says in terms of pi, that means that we're going to leave the pi alone. We're not going to put 3.14. We're not going to use our pi key. We're just going to treat it like it's a variable, and we're going to leave it pi. So we multiply pi times my radius squared. Okay, so order of operations. I'm going to go ahead and square my monomial to start. So 3 squared is 9. A to the fourth squared is A to the eighth and b to the second squared is b to the fourth. Okay, so the way I write my answer, again, because it's in terms of pi, is I'm going to write 9, a to the eighth, b to the fourth, and I'm treating pi as a variable, so I'm just kind of sticking it on the end here, and then because it's area, we're going to call this unit squared. Okay, number 16. Express the area of a circle in terms of pi if the diameter is represented by 19 m to the third n to the eighth units. Okay, so the only difference with this question is that now you've been given the diameter instead of the radius, and when we're doing area, we need the radius. So why don't we start by taking this, which is my diameter, and saying what the radius is. So remember the radius is half of the diameter. So if I take that and I divide it by two, I'm going to get 9.5. Remember when we divide a monomial, we divide the coefficients. So 19 divided by two is 9.5. And then we subtract the exponents. But since there aren't any variables or exponents that I'm dividing by, it's just gonna stay n to the third, n to the eighth. Okay, we never divide our exponents by two because 2 is a coefficient. Okay, so let's plug that into our formula. So pi times, now I have my radius, is 9.5 n to the third n to the eighth. And I have to square that. Okay, so 9.5 squared. I am getting 
3.25, and then m to the third squared is m to the sixth, and m to the eighth squared is m to the sixteenth. All right, so let's write our final answer out here. So we're going to have 90.25 m to the sixth, m to the sixteenth, put your pi on the end, units squared. There we go. All right, guys. So because you've officially learned all of the operations of monomials, we are now going to put them together in a single problem. So make sure you have room. <laughs> um, we're going to take this step by step. Okay. So again, it looks complicated, but if you take it step by step and you follow your order of operations, it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> okay, I know you think I'm crazy, but this, is, this can be fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by simplifying anything that has an exponent to it. Okay, when I say that, I don't just mean um, like a typical monomial with an exponent. I mean it has a double exponent. So there's an exponent on the outside of the parentheses, just like what this lesson was all about. So the first thing I'm going to take care of, I'm going to circle here, is that, that, that. Those three things are the first three things I need to simplify because they have the exponents on the outside. Okay, so let's take care of this top one here. 4a to the fifth, b squared, c to the third, all to the third power. Okay, so the rule is take your coefficient, raise it to the power, multiply your exponents. So 4 to the third power, 4 times 4 times 4, is 64. I'm actually going to move this up a little bit. 64. Um, a to the fifth to the third power, remember we're multiplying, is a to the 15th. b squared to the third power is b to the sixth. And c to the third to the third power is c to the ninth. Okay, so I'm going to put that back in parentheses, and I'm going to rewrite these problems. Do not be lazy with. You have to write out all of your steps, and you have to make sure you're neat. One little error can throw the whole problem off, which is super frustrating. Okay, so I'm going to put all of that over this bottom monomial that I'm going to square. So raise your coefficient to the exponents. Um, 8 squared is 64. And then we're going to multiply our exponents. So 8 squared to the second power is a to the 4. b to the third squared is b to the 6. And c to the fifth squared is c to the 10. All right, let's move over to the other side. So plus, now I have to take care of that monomial on top that's being raised to the third power. So 2 to the third power is 8. And then all of those exponents inside the parentheses are 1s. So this is going to be a to the 3rd, b to the 3rd, c to the 3rd, after we multiply. All right, and let's bring down the second parentheses here. And we also just are going to bring down the bottom because there aren't any exponents that we need to take care of there. Okay, so a lot of rewriting, but that's okay gets smaller with each step. Okay, so step two, we've taken care of the exponents, now we need to multiply. So we're going to multiply the top here, the top here, and the bottom here. Okay, so three things in our next step. So let's go ahead and do the, the top here. So 64 times 2 is 128. Remember, when we're multiplying, we multiply the coefficients and we add the exponents. So a to the 15th times a to the negative 2 is a to the 13th. b to the 6th times b to the 9th, or b to the 3rd, is b to the 9th. c to the 9th times c to the 1st is c to the 10th. Okay, and then I'm going to rewrite what we have on the bottom here. Any multiplying there, that stays the same for a minute. Okay, plus, let's get to the other side. So the top, frac uh, the top of the fraction over here, 8 times negative 7 is negative 56. A to the 3rd times A to the 17th is A to the 20th. B 
b to the third times b to the fourth is b to the seventh. And c to the third times c to the negative third is c to the zero. Which remember, anything to the zero power is one, and so we wouldn't write c at all. Okay, let's do the bottom. Four times negative two is negative eight. A to the seventh times A to the fourth is A to the eleventh. B squared times B squared is B to the fourth. Okay, we're getting there. Next step, we have to divide. Okay, so we're going to divide the fraction on the left and then the fraction on the right, and then hopefully we'll be able to add those together. So here we go. So we have big equals here. So remember, when we divide, we divide our coefficients and we subtract our exponents. So 128 divided by 64 is 2. a to the 13th divided by a to the 4th is a to the 9th. And b to the 9th divided by b to the 6th is b to the 3rd. And c to the 10th divided by c to the 10th is c to the 0, which again is 1, and so we don't need to write it. Okay, plus, let's do the other side. Negative 56 divided by negative 8 is positive 7. A to the 20th divided by A to the 11th is A to the 9th. B to the 7th divided by B to the 4th is B to the 3rd. All right, and we're on our final step. Can we add these together? Yes, they are like terms, so we're good to go. So we add our coefficients, 7 plus 2 is 9, and we keep our exponents, a to the ninth, b to the third. And there you go. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> Good job, guys.